Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News, everybody. Jack, Jack will <laughs> with I should start over with Century 21, Arizona Foothills. And Pat, what's my rate, McMasters? But we're missing Ruby today. Uh, we have a bit of a labor dispute. Um, labor dispute? Yeah, her her uh, her agent's wanting uh, more benefits. Um, benefits? More money. Yeah, yeah. Money? Money. She's getting paid? Yeah, uh, well, no, and that's the problem. Um, Pat, so. <laughs> I think we need to go. <laughs> Is Pat frozen? Oh, no. are you frozen? <laughs> Pat? No, you know, it just looks. Pat gets really laid back when we start these things, so he just, you know, we gonna we'll wake you up from time to time. So, no, you know, we got the usual demands. You know, she wants green M and M's in her in her dressing room and stuff like that. So, anyway, we'll figure it out. But hey, all this news um, it just hit YouTube by like crazy and probably because of one guy and we're going to touch on that a little bit, but I'm going to show you that. Take a look at, yeah. Yeah. Take a look at this. Our short-term rentals, bad 50% loss. Airbnb bubble just burst housing collapse. Uh, Michael Zuber, Airbnb to cause housing crash. Now I've watched his and he, he debunked it. Um, my favorite here he is. Airbnb owners are out about to sell mount massive housing crash coming. Now, He's got 371,000 views. Stage three collapse coming. Airbnb, our other buddy. Update, the Airbnb calamity. Well, let's dive into it. Um, first of all, um, when we look at this one, uh, I think you take it with a grain of salt because every thumbnail for the past three years has said 50% crash. So, um, you know, there's a credibility issue in my book with uh with that, he's predicted a crash in 2020, 2021, 2022, and said the crash has begun in 2023. Now he's warning us that Airbnbs are going to crash. And one of the things that he looked at was all the rooms.com. Well, there's, there's two major websites, all the rooms and Airbnb DNA. Now, I've never gone to all the rooms.com. I didn't pay for the service, so I don't see the numbers that he's got. He's not making them up, so I'll give him that. But like all data. Rick, can I say something to that though? Yeah. So Byron Lazine presented it on his show and he went to all the rooms and he said he could not find that data anywhere. Well, but he also said that it may be behind a paywall, which means that's true. Yeah, you because know, I couldn't find it either, but there's a lot of stuff that's just locked. Like right here. If I want to go to certain things, it'll it'll show me it's locked. I can't get in. See here where it says occupancy rate. There's a lock. Mm -hmm revenues that's a lock there so if i were to pay for this i could see the revenues and that's probably what uh what nick did so but let's talk about revenue for just a second so here we are sitting here at march at revenue average daily rate of 431 and now end of april which is as far as i can go it's 241 that's down right let's go to airbnb data it's showing February was 448 and now we're 320. Raise your hand if you think you know why. <laughs> why is that? Super Bowl. Yep. Super Bowl. We're, our February is always our highest. And in March, we've got what? Spring training. Spring training. So this year after year, this happens. Occupancy rate is 63%. That's, that's pretty good. Now, the other thing that we saw yesterday was Airbnb doesn't seem to match all the rooms.com on their numbers mm -hmm. that they're sharing. And there was a Twitter feed that came out that where uh, this reventure consulting put out this data and, and then he wasn't answering anybody's questions on the Twitter mm -hmm. feed. He just laid it out there and left the room. And uh, so, but oddly enough, Airbnb didn't chime in and neither did all the rooms. China and Airbnb uh, DNA. So you've got a rental demand sitting at 75. Now, I agree that there is probably way more uh, short-term rentals than we need, right? Absolutely. And and like just in Scottsdale, there's 7,671 active active rentals. The, those, those are the numbers. And of those numbers, it shows here that 
you've got um, 1,800 of them are two bedrooms, 1,700 are three bedrooms, and 1,555 are four bedrooms, and 1,000 five bedrooms. So the single family residences will probably make up this segment right, right here. There, there mm -hmm. might be some three bedroom condos in there, but for the most part, these are these are condos. So um, if 50% of those people decide they're getting out of the Airbnb business, what would the impact be? Well, it wouldn't help the first time home buyer, which is what we need to help with. Do you think they'd be on the, do you think there'll be a wholesale exit? Of Absolutely short not. Absolutely yeah. not. I spoke. I, so I, I sold quite a few Airbnb uh, over 2021 20, um, not in any of 22. I did have some clients in 22 that changed their mind about buying Airbnbs, but they saw we had so many. Um, there is not one client that I've sold an Airbnb to that has talked about selling. And I've talked to several of them. Now, I will tell you, because they got such great rates at the time, even if they bought them as investor properties, their spreads aren't as great as what they once were. Um, especially in 20 and 21, because people were going to Airbnbs a lot more because they felt a lot more comfortable in those versus hotels. But they have so much space in between there, between what their payment is and what their revenue is. It's like they've had to make a little bit of an adjustment on their you know, desirability of income, but none of them are in trouble. So I don't see liquidation sales. I don't even have any of mine wanting to sell. Well, and nobody's approached me wanting to sell one either. But then the other thing that was mentioned was that, that they that a lar large percentage of them are packaged in a certain loan product that is a subprime loan product. Pat, what do you know about that product? What's he talking about? Uh, he's talking about the debt, you know, the DSCR loan, the debt service coverage ratio, where basically um, it's outside the conventional realm. You know, like Jackie was saying, you know, I'm going to scoot over to Jackie real quick. So a lot of people that bought Airbnb, they did say investment loans, um, just basically using investment rates on a conventional loan. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there's people that did buy them as an investment. If they have the capability to put, uh, you know, just a regular investment property loan, uh, conventional, but there are obviously people that I think that, got into this market. There's probably going to be some rookies that got in that use a debt service coverage ratio where they have to put, you have to put 20, 25% down. Um, the credit scores are still, you know, you know, he was saying low credit scores. Typically I've seen, you got to have at least 680 to 700, 720. Um, they're not giving them out like back in 08, 09. We were East comparing apples and green beans to this because in 08, 09, <laughs> I was giving out, not giving out, but, but basically we were writing people that were 550, 560, 570, 580 FICO scores. Um, you know, I remember there's one program out there. I knew that we hit the top of the market when it was a 600 FICO score, or you could do hundred percent financing investment property. Wow. Uh, for with a 600 FICO score, you know, those, those loans are not there anymore. So with the DSCR loans, they basically take, what to make it simple? Obviously, if your property is bringing in say thirty five hundred dollars a month, and your payments thirty five hundred dollars, that's a one to one you know, ratio. So they typically typically will lend on that. If you're bringing in less money than what your mortgage payment is, they'll go down to point seven. You know, typically seventy five point seven five of the payment. But they're still they're not as easy as people say they are. They're still qualifying them. Sometimes these lenders come out and say, oh, these DSCR loans are easy, just 12-month bank statements, personal or business, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you ask any mortgage loan officer, and sometimes these loans are a bigger pain in the butt to do than conventional because they start digging deep. They start asking questions. So it's not like they're just handing them out left and right. But I do agree there will be, you know, there's going to be some fringe investors that got into it that really don't know what they're doing. Is, is that enough to create a crash? I don't think so. Yeah, I think I think my main point on this and the reason I wanted to bring it up today is that at a certain point, you have to start examining 
track records and credibility. And when you see a claim that we're about to see a big wave and a big crash coming, then you have to finally just say, well, who is it that's telling me that? And when you start reaching 300,000 people in one day with that message, um, it, it needs to be questioned. Yeah, and absolutely. I don't, I don't see that, see it happen. Now, go crunch your numbers and take a look and then, you know, look at what we're, what we're sharing. And, uh, you know, and if you happen to see, if you happen to have a paid version of all the rooms.com, I'd, I'd love to see the numbers. Um, I'm sure revenues down 40% versus last April could be, um, if you're looking at uh, now revenues from June to June, I kind of doubt we're down 40% June to June. Um, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it's that bad, but you know, look, some no piece of cake here anyway. So, um, you know, I was like when I used to manage Palm Springs and you, and the general manager say, why was it such a bad week last week? And I go, well, it was hot. And he goes, how hot was it last year? Um, so, you know, it's, it's hot and our vacation season is, is done. So now if it doesn't start spiking back up in November and December, then yeah. Now, so I imagine most short-term rental owners are sitting back going, well, you know, I expect slow summers. I have a friend, he's got one up here. He said, He's uh, now he's getting nine hundred dollars a night for this. He's booked wow. solid through the end of August already. So wow. he he breaks even just from summer. He can sit empty, but but that's in their planning. So people in Arizona the same way, you know the the Airbnbs, the short term rentals that they have up in Pine Top and the White Mountains and Sholo. Okay, they're planning on a good summer, and it's going to fill their bank account to hold them for the rest of the year. And they are not banking on high winter traffic. So it's just the opposite of what's going on in Scottsdale. So yeah. I just implore people, you know, to, to do some research on that. Well, I want to jump in quick. Can I jump in oh, quick? Like we talked yeah. about earlier, earlier quick, Rick, um, you know, these claims of a crash, 50% crash. That's assuming that everybody that owns an Airbnb is going to wake up one day, you know, July 1st and say, I got to sell. You know, everybody's got to sell. I mean, yeah, not you know, going to happen. This is not, it's not a cataclysmic event like 08, 09, where we did see something happen very quickly. You know, the banking, you know, crisis, obviously the, everybody kind of it all imploded at the same time. And that's where you had this whole just 50% crash. And like you and I talked about earlier before we got on, it's yeah, there's going to be, let's face it. Let's be realistic. There's going to be some rookie investors out there that get burned. They're going to have to sell. But it's not everybody. So this is not it's not going to be something that's going to create a crash. These guys are talking like there's going to be a crash all at one time. It's going to be. We've only got 10,000 listings. If there's a if there's 5,000 that all of a sudden show up, they're going to be scooped up the next day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're just clickbait. It's just all clickbait. Yeah, you know, yeah. and the thing is, is if you look at that source, and I think a lot of people are coming out with videos after him, because a lot of people, I see a lot of these crash bros ride his tail, whatever he puts out, they put it out too. But the guy doesn't even own a home. And if you look at all the people he said, don't buy, and it started in 2019, even before COVID saying there was a crash coming, I don't know what his basis for that was. But in 2019, 2020 and 2021, I can only imagine how many people listened to him and lost out in 40% gains of equity. It's no. pathetic. And well, he he's telling you a real estate app now. So yeah. And follow me. Respond. I haven't been right here Buy my app. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, we're going to get slapped around for picking on the guy, but I'm telling you, look, you, you, tell me when he's been right. And now he's telling you that Airbnbs are going to crash. Give me one example where he's been right that would make you lean to think that this is correct information. I just, I just don't believe it. Um, I'm going to show some of our local stats. Pat, your your chart disappeared, so I'm going to show this while you're you're pulling your chart up and okay. getting back to where we are now. I mean, this is our inventory situation. So you dump a bunch of Airbnbs on us, and we end up, you know, up here. Um, boy, that's a good thing. I hope so. And I hope at that point we see some headlines that go, inventory is up 150%. The end is near. We need to be up about 350%. So, you know, the headlines bring them along. Now, we are seeing our contract ratios uh, went are going down. We were sitting at 83.5 and now we're 76.1. So, you know, sales are slowing 
gradually, nothing, nothing major. Um, and the percent of seller paid concessions are down about from 43% to 41%. So they're down 2%. We hit a peak up here of 51% and went down about $1,700. So with interest rates higher now um, and inventory so tight, because of the tightness in the inventory, the sellers aren't feeling that they need to give as many concessions as they were. And you can see here that the gap between new listings and new contracts is again, 90%. Uh, and that puts pricing pressure on the upside. Now these yeah. numbers are going to be a mess next week because of the 4th of July. That's going to throw everything out of whack for a couple of weeks. If you look here at our annual percentage square foot, look at Paradise Valley now at $745. Last year, it was 661. Remember the headline that said that we were down 11% nationally? Well, here you are. Uh, Gold Canyon, 292 this year, 276 last year. You can see the, the digits here. I don't see any in the negative range. Uh, the lowest one is Arizona City. They've only gone up $4 a square foot. So that's where our market sits today. And if we're looking at our total inventory and you have an Airbnb and you need to sell it uh, because your math isn't, isn't working out right now, which I get, there's an oversaturation. Um, you won't have a hard time. Mm -mm. You really you know, won't. Rick, I was on a, our office meeting prior to this and there were multiple agents stating one, one agent had 15 offers on a listing for 415 this week. Yeah. It's anything that's under the 450 mark, it's multiple yeah. offers. It's crazy. I, I well, think a lot of these short term in. rentals are really in good shape. So if they do sell, they're a they are a prime product. Oh yeah. yeah. They, they won't yeah. be selling junk. So mm -mm. and they come with call furniture. us, we can get it sold for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a couple of days. So and they come with furniture too. So Pat rates, what say you? Today is kind of interesting. How come? Yeah, we had one of these. We're not having a good day. Um, <laughs> five and a half coupons down 62 basis points. The U.S. Treasury, 10-year Treasury is up 14. As you can see, this green, This is these are rates. So it's spiked um, this morning based on the numbers that came out on it was actually GDP revised GDP numbers that came out that were shown as actual first quarter growth was about 2% versus like 1.3. The previous estimate was 1.3. So there's some revision there. And that's what kind of caught these traders um, by surprise. And also I think the market's starting to digest, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the, the, there was obviously thinking that, okay, the feds were going to pause and not get too crazy. But now Powell's coming out and saying that, you know, I guess he was over in Spain saying at the ECB or the Economic uh, Council in Spain saying that, um, you know, expect probably two more, two two or more, you know, times by the end of the year, another increase in rates. So I think the market is trying to digest that. It's going to start digesting that. Obviously, you got the numbers uh, coming out in July. So it's going to be, you know, <laughs> the Feds are – we're saying, hey, you know, you can't fight the Fed, obviously, and the market's starting to realize that. Like, hey, we're probably going to see, see higher rates. But I think, once again, if the Feds do raise rates, then we go back to that the underlying banking issue where you got an inverted uh, yield curve where people start taking money from, the, you know, the deposits and moving into money markets because their rates are higher, and then the banks have to uh, maybe do something to raise capital like they did a couple of weeks, you know, about a month ago or so. Yeah, and I'm no So I'm if they no get too crazy... Expert. I sit back and question, so what matters most to them right now, the unemployment data or the inflation rate? What happens if we get a really good inflation number in, in July? Yeah. Does that overshadow unemployment? Um, you know, because they, they feel like you've, you've got to have higher unemployment to lower inflation. Well, what if, lo and behold, we end up tracking really good with low inflation does that make them go, well, oh, let's not worry about unemployment right now. So I don't know. I, yeah. but those are the things that we're going to have to watch as we get in the middle of July. Between now and then, right. it's it's gonna, it's just going to do this, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you stretch it out. You stretch it out over um, 
you know, you stretch this chart out. It looks bad, you know, when you short short term. And so you stretch it out here further a year. Give me one second here. Well, my computer's not. You see how we're just kind of stuck in this uh, this this kind of channel here. Um, you know, we saw a high on, you know, back, this is about 4.3, 4 4.28 on the 10 year right now. We're at, you know, 3.85. So I think, um, you know, we're going to have these days, we have these periods where you're going to have a chance to lock, get a little bit better pricing. And there's going to be some weeks where it's like, okay, we're going to just have to, you know, gird our loin and sit back and just, it just could be one of those channels. It just seems like it's driven in this channel. And every up and down based on consumer confidence, the inflation. I think the feds are, I've, I've heard several experts, Larry Kudlow um, and other very various financial analysts and respected people that saying for the feds to just zoom in on unemployment, you know, the employment rate, um, it's kind of ridiculous. You know, you got to kill employment to kill inflation. I think you can kill inflation by doing a lot more things than kill employment. You know, employment. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, but they don't. You know, they haven't called me, um, <laughs> Jackie. Have they called you? And then no, yeah. not yet. I've left several yeah, so messages I'm, too. I'm, my phone's on though. If they want to, <laughs> you know, and uh, so, so I I have one. This next this next uh, article here is for you, Jackie. Um, one of our favorite guys. Um, oh Lord, is rumored to be coming out in September October to go look at new constructions, boots on I the ground. Heard. Talk about how bad it is out there. And, uh, and so here's a headline, uh, new home sales crush expectations and rise for third month in a row. Yeah. I'm <laughs> selling more new homes than I have since the early two thousands. It's crazy. I've got another client this weekend. I'm taking out looking at new homes. Yeah. It's really picked up. In fact, I think it's, uh, it's 50% of our overall sales from what I understand now. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's that's nationally. So it's probably higher than that here. So I'm looking forward to the video uh, when he comes out and says, see all these buildings there. The, the end is near. So, you know, and, and maybe we'll talk about it. And, uh, you know, but we know better than to reach out because we so Rick, really have to. he mentioned where he's going, though. I think yeah. I, I I'm half apt to just show up since he wouldn't since he wanted to just call me trash for offering to spend my day with him and show him around when he's standing there showing my client's house in his video that's about to close, <laughs> which closed and she loves it. And that community is selling like crazy because it's it's the first time home buyer price point. We don't have enough inventory. Um, I might just show up. I'm going to track him down. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, let's pack a lunch and let's uh, we'll lay out a little blanky blanky there and say, hey, let's sit down and have a chit chat. We're well, we're friendly. You're gonna you're gonna be in Washington still, so maybe uh, Pat, you can go with me because I don't know that I want to yeah. go face to face with him without you. Now, stand you next to him. Oh, he might change his tune. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been working out. I'm, yeah, I'm huge, yeah, Jerry. I'm huge. I'm working out. <laughs> well i'll just show up my rv and just stay there at the construction site so just sit there you know well it'll be like a food truck you know i wonder if he'll hey, go jackie, at four o'clock again <laughs> a quick question jackie uh you know uh, obviously it's the price points are there do you think a lot of it's driven by the incentives do you think these incentives with the i would think yeah. that the with the demand happening in the new bill that the incentives would kind of dry up because they don't need to have the incentives so I'm um, well, but I also on the same hand that the incentives what's driving people. I mean, I've had people, I had a client, they're closing tomorrow on a new build and it's century communities. I've honestly, I had never even heard of them before this one, West Valley mid threes. So I showed them a resale house that they absolutely loved. They chose to go with the new build all because of the interest rate. That was it. Now they are starting to to cut back some of the incentives. So before we were seeing the you know four point eight five. Now I'm seeing four point nine to five point five, and I'm not seeing as many extra incentives on on top of it. So <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. I got a tickle in my throat. I was seeing anywhere up to twenty thousand dollars the beginning of the year on top of the the lower interest rate. Now the most I'm seeing is about five thousand. 
Yeah, I would think so, that with the demand with the demand coming in, that they would not have to use incentives incentives to, uh, you know, since demand's there, you know, typically you use incentives to get demand going, but now the demand is there. It's like okay, we can pull back on the incentives, and you know, the market will dictate it, it, that. It sounds like from what I'm seeing too, they're they're not offering the design center credits at the amount that they were, and they're not offering discounts on prices, but they it's are all still, inventory still buying down the rates. So, yeah. So the buy yeah. down rates are typically all on the inventory quick close houses. If you're not doing the quick close inventory homes, a lot of times the rates they're they're they they buy down the rates or they'll give you twenty thousand dollars to buy down the rate. But those four point nines and fives that I'm seeing, those are only on quick move ins. Hell, it's working. It's working. You know, well, here's folks, the thing. Uh, oh, well, I was going to I was going to. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, for instance, those people that are closing tomorrow, when we went to look at resale. So I think when I did their search in the area they wanted, there was only six houses that came up. But then we had a whole galore of new builds that are all building that area, offering the incentives. So. Well, they, they have to because they're going to they're all going to crash. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's coming up. So, so next crap. week, uh, Pat, we'll we'll circle back tomorrow uh, live and uh, answer people's questions and uh, uh, get ready for a big. There's going to be some long weekends here. People are taking Monday off, so uh, to get ready for Tuesday for the Fourth of July. And I probably will not be doing a Monday live uh, at eight thirty like I normally do. I'm going to be a couple hours uh, west of here, and uh, um, I may do it. It depends. I'm going to be hanging out with family. There's going to be a big, they have this small town. It's a great big 4th of July parade and stuff. And I haven't seen it in, in uh, 40 years. So I'm going to oh, go out fun. and see what's going on. And uh, so still having fun and uh, not planning on coming back anytime soon. But if you need any help in the Arizona real estate market, you're looking at it right below there. And just give us a holler and she'll take care of everything whilst I am away. Everybody have a great weekend. See you next time. Happy 4th. Have a great weekend. Happy 4th.